<laughs> That's not what we're talking about. Oh, God calling. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I like to think that if you're reading a devotional or you're looking at an evotional, as we're doing, looking and listening and reading and considering, that it wouldn't be a downer <laughs> and that it wouldn't be some kind of a, oh, I don't know, contrived upper, you know, like taking some kind of quick shot of coffee, you know, and being wired and inspired. <laughs> But rather, it would be a genuine enjoyment of participating with Jesus. You know, I moved my chair from the left side of me to right in front of me next to the camera because in my mind, with, you could say as weird as I am, or my imagination, or my reality, which is what I think it is, I can almost see Jesus sitting here, you know, watching me and then smiling at times when the words that I speak aren't my own but they're his and sometimes you know I just get a kick out of that because that's the way my relationship with God is is that I like and I enjoy the times that I take to be still and to not just imagine Jesus there but to have him here with me with you and I think that's what really, you know, church is about, or Bible study is about, or God is about. It wasn't about laying down some religious trip and saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for all these people to, you know, bow down and worship me because I'm desperately lonely and I need somebody to, you know, pay attention to me. No, God isn't like that. God is living and alive, and because he created you, he wanted you to participate with him in knowing him not just going about your way and saying ah you know thanks god goodbye you know <laughs> and that's why we have and i guess you could say the church developed you know and the people that have followed god have encouraged devotional time you know emotional time times when like from genesis it says that and god walked in the cool of the day with adam wouldn't it be wonderful to know that you could do the same? For me, <laughs> bluntly, <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> I don't know what you do, but, you know, God comes to me and meets me every day. I, you know, it's not always, you know, you know, milk and cookies, but <laughs> sometimes I lose my cookies. But God always meets me and shares with me and cares for me and, you know, whether I'm in sin or whether I'm in righteousness, whether I'm in good feelings or bad, whether I'm suffering or whether I'm in healed, you know, in some way, God is always with me, and I love that. You know, I just look forward to the day that I just see him more and more rather than just in the cool of the day. So in God calling, like our cool of the day, God's friendship. <laughs> Sometimes I don't read these ahead of time. I don't even know that I'm going to be talking about it. I am your... <laughs> Boy, talk about Lord. You must be on the same mindset. I am your friend, the companion of the dreary ways of your life. I rob those ways of their grayness and horror. I transform them. Even in the earthly friendships, the common way, the weary way, the steep way, may seem a way to heaven if the presence of some loved human friend transform them. Isn't it easier to do something when someone you care about is with you? I know my wife just recently has begun to go swimming with a friend of hers, and she loves it because she's got someone to go with to swim as a form of exercise, and she she's just thrilled about it. I mean, I'm amazed, you know. It's like, wow, cool, go for it. <laughs> no, I'm not going with her. <laughs> Too much work. But... It makes it so much easier when you have a friend with you to do as this is saying with God. Let the Sabbath calm, let the day of rest enwrap your minds and hearts, and let it be a rest from the worry and fret of life. Whatever day you choose to rest, let it be so. Have you ever realized the wonder of the friendship you can have with me? 
Have you ever thought what it means to be able to summon at will the God of the world? Even with a privileged visitor to an earthly king, there is the palace antechamber, and the time must be at the pleasure of the king. Like you, in our day, we would make an appointment to meet with the dignitary, or we would meet with someone that we set schedule ahead of time to meet with. But to my subjects, I have given the right to enter my presence whenever they will. No, more than that, they can summon me to their bedside, to their workshop, because I am there. When men seek to worship me, they think of the worlds I rule over, of creation, of mighty law and order, of, and not the TV show. <laughs> and when they feel the awe that precedes worship, they are impressed with me, they sense me. To you, I say, feel awe and feel the desire to worship me in wondering amazement. But think too of the mighty, tender, humble condescension and tenderness and the reality of my friendship. Think of me in the little things of your everyday life. My favorite line is one that my wife hates for me to quote, but <laughs> I tell it to everyone. If, if you don't realize that God is there in your bowel movement, then you don't realize that God is anywhere, <laughs> because God is everywhere. And that's a reality. So. In all of your life, in all of your ways, in everything you're doing, no matter what you think or what you say, God is there. That's the bottom line. So if that gives you a blessing, then I hope that that means your friendship with God is intimate and real and you become more tender and more recognizable of who God is and He knows you better than you know yourself. But if it's a fear, then I pray that you would learn to recognize that God knows it all anyway, so confess it and get over it and get on with it and get rid of it and get away from it and just get done with it so that way God could get on with you and you could become more intimate and real with him in a way you never dreamed possible that you didn't even know existed that you'd heard that you could hear God's voice but you didn't know that God could actually even physically appear to you yes he can there's nothing that God is limited to people say oh well that's the God of the Old Testament or that's the God of the New Testament or that's the God of this and the God of that no it's God that's it <laughs> you know, God is God I mean I, I've never been able to fathom how people can come up with these ideas that well God can't put all this and God won't do this and God won't do that and you know what whatever these people are thinking about God is wrong because God is God and that means that anything and anywhere and anytime and any place and any will and any choice that he makes he can do period that's why he's called God and we're called not it's ridiculous and that's why we need to recognize that the Lord our God loves you and wants to be intimate and personal to you so you're either going to look forward to that or you're going to run from it the choice is yours be an atom on the one side of the apple or be an atom on the other personally I'll take grapefruit <laughs> and just enjoy the goodness of the Lord today as I walk with him and as you talk with him and as we both hear his voice Thank you.